you know, these guys have been putting out videos over and over again. One thing I've said to Darth Vader earlier is like, I don't know any president who's gotten so many videos, songs made about him in a positive way. <laughs> Oftentimes there's been other presidents like Biden, songs that are made about him is in a negative way. But, uh, <laughs> but Donald Trump has such a strong fan base that you got an entire group of artists making music all about Donald Trump and the love they have for this country. That is something to admire. Mm -hmm. You can't overlook that. So let's take a listen. Legal FBI on the t-shirt. So that tells me a lot already. Oh, <laughs> let's man. see where this is going. <laughs> let's turn this music down. Number one, I'm closing that border. Like they had it. We had the best people to come into our country but we want them to come in legally it's time to put america first and close the border it's time to put america first and close the border it's time to put america first and close the border it's time to put america first get your votes in patriots come together yeah it's time to win white black and brown on my legal immigrants we started from the bottom but we made it cross a fence just come the right way if you're coming in i love my country i'm ashamed of my government stand with trump he never broke one promise yet. i wish the left cared about the homeless bed as they do about illegal immigrants my skin is brown i come from the streets if you want world peace bring back mean tweets i feel like 50 <laughs> 50 per million mayor adams what the fuck yeah I, if you I, want I, world I, peace bring back mean back tweets, tweets. <laughs> <laughs> i think we've said i've said this before like because of the condition of our society today trump is well needed you you can't fix a broken society you can't go against these supposed enemies of this these united states you cannot address the establishment if you are a nice guy nice guy get nothing done like no. joe, joe biden gets nothing done he no, cannot you get can't, you done. can't be a pushover and no. go against all this stuff that's going around yeah you've got to be <sighs> you've got hard to you've got to be the warrior yeah, that people need yeah, you and gotta be that's what Trump is. He is yeah. that shield for yeah. the people. Yeah, yeah, and that's what we love about him. And that's and that's what you know. That's that whole meme that goes around where you know he's kind of leaning on his knees and pointing a finger, and he says, mm -hmm. "They're not. You think they're after me? No, mm -hmm. they're after you, and I'm just in the way." That's right. I just happen to be standing in the way. They can't stand that. <laughs> Let's keep going. I feel like 50 tatted Trump like punk. 53 million Mayor Adams, what the fuck? F Zelensky, F Ukraine, F NATO and that buddy. Yeah. We know you got hairy legs, but you ain't got no brain. Trying to flood the border, trying to drive the railway. Put America first and close the border. It's time to put America first and close the border. It's time to put America first and close the border. It's time to put America first. Get your boats in. Patriots come together, yeah, it's time to win. White, black, and brown on my legal immigrants. Started from the bottom. But we made it cross a fence. Just come the right way if you're coming in. Well, I'll give, I'll give Biden some credit for telling the truth about what he was going to do regarding the border. He did not lie. He did say, once I become president, I'm going to, I'm going to open the border. So he undid all these policies that Trump had already in place to protect the border. He undid all, so many of them. I think it's over 15 different ones. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So he, and, and that was on day one. Yeah, the first day. Yeah, he took his little pen and undid everything. Yeah. It's crazy. At least we can give him credit for that. He did say he did say he was gonna do it and he did do it. Started from the bottom, but we made it cross a bend. Just come the right way if you're coming in. Wash your hands and wipe that dirt from your eyes. Chasing freedom got you hurting inside. Yeah. I know it breaks your heart when you hear a Latino say close the border. Close the border. We work too hard for y'all just to come in and try to take it over. It's time to build that wall and build it to the sky. Legal immigrant in a suit and tie. All my life I've been hustling and struggling. Working jobs, got nothing from the government. Attention Biden voters. Let's put your signs back in your yard. So the Alegos know where to stop for food and shelter. Thank you. The people's voice. It's time to put America first and close the border. It's time to put That's crazy, man. That's crazy. What a message.
<laughs> but that's what they've done in New York and many other places. It was so bad that they were the the mayor of New York, Mary uh, Eric Adam, was asking for people to open their homes and accept illegals in their homes, and the government was going to financially support you if you were to do that. Yeah, you can uh, suck an egg on that one, Mister Adams. Cause... Well, I don't know why they why don't they open their home? They they got plenty of homes. And plenty of space in those huge yeah, homes. Your home, I'm yeah. sorry, your homes are much larger than mine. And is. putting them in the, in the, it's crazy. They don't live where these issues are. They bring these people and drop them in communities where poor people live. And then they go live in the high hills in their glass house. And they like, yeah, yeah, yeah. So we lose our schools, we lose our communities, we lose our parks. So you want to take our homes too? What's next, fascist? <laughs> What's next? <laughs> like these mm -hmm. people. Anyway. Thank you, the people's voice. It's time to put America first and close the border. It's time to put America first and close the border. It's time to put America first and close the border. It's time to put America first. Get your boats in. Patriots come together, yeah, it's time to win. White, black, and brown on my legal immigrants. We started from the bottom, but we made it across the fence. Just come the right way if you're coming in. Great job on that. Yeah, I mean, you can come in. You just have to come in the right way, just like everybody else um, who are in this country did that are immigrants. That's all. Mm -hmm. yeah. Nobody's saying you can't come. You, you just The idea of you having this access to this country. And you thinking know, you're own free stuff yeah. when you get here. That's crazy, man. To me, it's... The sense of entitlement is unreal. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, the other day I was doing a little bit of Bible study. Um, it's about the Gibeonite. Have you heard of, you probably heard of them before. It's I've called heard them. of them, but it's yeah. been a while. It's been a while, it's but this is one, of those, it's one of those studies that I think, I think we need to look at when we're comparing what's happening with the migrants and everything. And I mean, I mean, nobody's saying all migrants are bad. There are some that are coming in who really have good intent and they're trying to look for a better way to make a living and so on. So I don't go out condemning all people, mm -hmm. but there's still, they should, they should come in legally though. So it's called the deception of the Gideon, the Gibeonites. So these nations, you know, Joshua was on fire at this time. They were like conquering all these different nations. And then when they, they, they overcame the Hittites, the Amorites and the Parasites and the Canaanites and the Havites and the Jebusites and so on. So the Gibeonites, heard that you know the children of israel were continuing to win these battles so they decided how about we come to joshua but we're gonna make it appear that we are in tremendous need of help right what they ended up doing they got old shoes look at that and clouded up on their feet and old garments up on them and all the bread and their provision was dry and moldy <laughs> so they came with a massive deception they went to joshua onto the camp at gilgal and then said unto Ham and to the men of Israel, uh, we become from a far country and now take you league with us. Listen to what they're doing. They come in and say, oh, we came from a far country. But surely they were neighbors. They were like not even two miles down the road. But they say, we came from a far country, extremely tired and overwhelmed. Please accept us as neighbors. Well, the deception was accepted because Joshua didn't really consider what was happening. He actually accepted them. Mm -hmm. And they became up. They began. Uh, they began to become a plague later on to Israel, but many of them ended up becoming slaves, and they ended up serving um, in the camp and everything else. And the point of the matter is, these men were illegal. They came in with the wrong intent. They could have come in through the right door. They could have come in and said, "We want to serve. We want to worship the God of Israel, and we want you to not kill us." We will be, we will subject ourselves to the God of Israel. And that would have, that would have saved their lives. But instead, they choose to be seen. Um, right. And I think what's going on here, um, we are seeing something similar, is that we are seeing people coming in that we don't even know who they are. Some of them were in mental asylums. Their prison have been emptied. Mm -hmm. Some of them were gang members. You know what I'm saying? So as a result of them coming here, they are committing crimes because they are desperate. They can't work. So whenever you put young men 
in a country where they cannot work, they will allude to crimes and violence as just a what natural thing. You don't give them responsibilities or give, give them a, a sense of purpose, they will do these things. So I think a um, similar thing happened to Israel as a result of them opening their doors and accepting things. They ended up having trouble down the road. I'm hoping and praying that's not the case in this country, but uh, I think I'm too late about that because trouble is already happening. <laughs> you know, yeah. and the, it's tr the, the troubles have already started. I mean, just well, look well, at really, New York City. Oh, my Lord. I mean, when when you have three immigrants who turn around and beat down a police officer and walk out flipping the bird from court, I what mean, you, come on. What else do you need to do? I think, uh, what's his name? Chip Roy? He, he gave a piece of his mind just the other day. Yeah, I mean, um, but he was going off on Twitter talking about um, how many of these people are already here from Islamic nations. Mm -hmm. um, and he's warning, like, look what happened to Germany. These Islamic nations are coming in. There it is right there. And they're coming in, not respecting our laws. They, they're coming in with the hope of enforcing Sharia laws. Mm -hmm. They're coming in saying death to America. And the other thing that I also heard that's also troubling, we are not having enough children. Our birth rate has been lowered. We're trying to save the planet, you know, climate change. We don't want to have babies, right? And as a result of that, and that's one of the reasons why Dr. Phil has been speaking so much, because it's like, yo, guys, we're not having enough children. We're dying. We are a dying race. And the black population is, is even worse. So, well, you also got to remember we have uh, yeah. our, our, the mm -hmm. fruitiest generation. The fruitiest of, generation. So we are the fruitiest generation. History. Yeah. So, we are the I fruitiest mean, generation, but we are also, we are canceling them in the wound. Mm-hmm. At the highest rate, the other country has done more than we do. So we have a, a serious record in that. And at the same time, we're not having enough children. And there's a lot of birth controls. So while this is happening, here is the scary thing. The, the Islamic nation, the Muslims, they are having four to five kids per families. Mm -hmm. So what they're saying in the next 10 years or so, we should be overwhelmed by the Islamic population. And if they overwhelm, if they their population increased tremendously, what is, what's going to happen? They can bring whatever laws. They can put whatever whoever they want in politics. They can bring Sharia laws, and in some cases, Sharia laws is trouble. Yeah, and 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 that's another thing that people are beginning to realize. Wait a minute, this is not a good thing. It's already happening in Germany, and I'm not trying to leave in that scary thing. Oh, this it's already happening in the UK. It's happening already. So look, take a listen to Chip Roy because you will see what I'm trying to say here because he's going to say exactly the same thing. I mean, is anybody paying attention to what's happening in London? I'm going to say it here on the floor of the house to get the scorn of people when I say you've got a massive Muslim takeover of the United Kingdom going on right before our eyes. He would say, Chip, well, what is wrong with that? Well, I've got some pretty strong concerns about Sharia law and whether that'll be forced upon the American people. In this case, the people of the United Kingdom. I've got pretty strong concerns about people who want to see Israel's destruction, who were happy about October 7th, who were elected in the United Kingdom. Some might say that we've seen that here in the United States. What are we going to do about that? We have 51 and a half million people who are foreign born in the United States. They have about 20 to 25 million kids. That puts that well over 20 some percent of our population. It's the highest such number in the history of our country. People say, well, isn't that great? Is it? Are we teaching people about Western civilization? Are we teaching people about the constitution, the bill of rights, the rule of law? Are we teaching them Western values? Are we teaching them God exists? Are we, they teach, are we teaching them the importance of freedom? Or are we teaching an entire generation or two or three to run around complaining about what's wrong and why the entire world is against them because of their skin color, their sex, their supposed gender identity, whatever the hell category we create to make people have an excuse for not just stepping up and achieving the American dream? I'm telling you, boy. They're creating an entire generation of victims. Yeah, yeah. And as a result of that, 
the Islamic nation is just taking advantage of it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they're just they're just thriving. They don't they don't they don't talk like that. You don't hear them talk like that. It's like we we why do we have to be ashamed of our values, ashamed of our God, ashamed of our constitution, in the name of trying to protect this little group, that little group, intersectionality. Everybody has to be happy. We don't want to step on anybody's toes in that process. We end up every we end up losing everything that we love. Mm -hmm. And everything that we are. What a as shame. A, as a nation. What a shame. But I think, just like he said, right, are we teaching these values to our country? Are we teaching our sons and daughters that God exists? And I think this is where it, it all started getting bad. I was talking to my son, my 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 13 year old, and he's like, when you read the Bible, you know, Jesus in Matthew 20. 23, uh, 22, speaking about how you are to love God with all your heart, mind, soul, and spirit, and love your neighbor as yourself. This is the law of God. And I'm, he's like, what do you mean? This is the law of God. I said, well, if you think about it, like, like when you love God, right, you, you, you love God with all your heart, mind, soul, and spirit, you, f you obey the first four commandments of the table. And if you love your neighbor as yourself, you will naturally obey the last six. I said, the reason we love our neighbor as ourselves is because you love God. Mm -hmm. and if you don't love God, you don't see the value for those around you. When you love God, then you understand those around you were also creating an image of God. Then you give them value. Well, the problem in this country is that we've rejected God. Or oh, we say we don't need no God. We have evolution. We don't need God. We can You can be atheist, heathen. We can do whatever we want to do. And he's been taught in our colleges and our schools. And over time, what's done begin to happen we're starting to say to ourselves, if God doesn't exist, well, does is there any value for humanity? So we start canceling the, the children in the womb, right? Well, we start, we start, we start putting value on animals more, more than we, do, we put on people. We yeah. start putting laws in place to destroy the very nation that God has blessed us with. Why? Because we we don't need God. Whenever you don't need God, whenever you reject God. Uh, a nation always goes down into this down spiral of corruption, and that's what we are headed. It's it's heartbreaking because you watch it happening, and you wish people would realize what they're doing. It's like, yo, do you see what you're doing to your own people in your own nation? But no, no, they they're fighting the power in in the name of fighting white supremacists and patriarchy. But you're killing yourself. You're destroying your own nation. It is so sad. So sad. Anyway, 